Well, former New York City Transit President Sarah Feinberg left the MTA last year. This is after serving just over a year in that role, leading the department through the turbulent time of COVID-19. And today she returns with her own consulting firm. But uh, recently, Sarah Feinberg made headlines because she was randomly attacked outside of a subway station in Chelsea. You may recall it was Sarah Feinberg who, during her reign, fought for more patrols in the subway system at a time where transit violence was soaring. Sarah Feinberg joining us this morning. Thank goodness you look good. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm, t I'm totally fine. Um, you know, this was, as you said, a totally random, unprovoked attack, um, but I didn't have my kids with me and um, Thank I didn't goodness. tumble into traffic and I'm totally fine and um, glad that it's in my rear view mirror. And this morning on the way to your studio, there were two uniformed police officers in my subway car. And so I was like, yeah. how long have I been asking for this? Mm. So that's nice. Three but, years later. All right. So tell <laughs> us what happened on the streets of New York. Were you by the subway station? Where were you? No, I was I was at 21st and 6th Ave in front of that Trader Joe's, yeah. which everyone's familiar with, and um, was just waiting for the walk signal, waiting to cross the street, and a man came out of nowhere, and I sort of saw him in my peripheral vision, and I turned, and he just sucker punched me in the face. Did you just fall? Bizarre. I did not fall, luckily, because I was on that little median between the bike lane and the, the street, um, so I did not fall. Um, and But, it, you know, I think it is... Um, Look, again, I'm fine. We have seen things in the last years, months, weeks that are tremendously worse, right? Mm. We had a subway cleaner um, just uh, just a week ago that I was know. beaten with a metal pipe, with a metal pipe, which is yeah. horrifying. Um, just doing her job. So, so this is not about um, oh, what a terrible attack. Um, but I think it is reflective of what people are worried about in New York at this moment. And I think if there's anything that came out of um, our election this week, hopefully it's that a pretty loud, uh, loud message was sent saying, you know, this is we've got to get things back on track here. It's, it's funny that you say that because when we look at the election the past couple of weeks, did, did that ever anger you at all? Maybe when some politician said, oh, the crime, it's a conspiracy thing. It's really not that bad. And you're like, I just got hit in the face by someone random. Well, what what bothers me about that is it it just when what I think the the elected officials don't understand is when you say that you are sending a very loud and clear message to New Yorkers that you are utterly out of touch. Uh, hmm. <laughs> because I think if you feel like crime is uh, an issue of perception, it's a conspiracy theory. That says to me that every morning you're getting in a car, you're driving to a fancy office or working yeah. from home with security. With, yeah, perhaps with a security detail, you're in your cushy car and then you're you're home and you're like I had a great day like yeah. what is what is everybody talking about it's folks who are out all day on the streets in the subway system on the buses out and about who are sort of witnessing the chaos and the disorder so you know that's what that's what bothers um, me about it is I've got elected officials who represent me who represent my family who represent the city that I love who clearly aren't out in the city feeling yeah. what we're feeling um, how have you kind of moved forward? I know you're saying it's in the rearview mirror, but psychologically, you have to, that has to do something to you because you might be walking around thinking like, would this happen again? Looking at people a certain way, because I do that now and I've not been punched in the face yet. Well, I- Yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want to say yet, but like that's a terrible way to think. Yeah, look, I think after something happens, there's, there's a bit of a reaction to it, right? Like um, yesterday afternoon, I was walking on the sidewalk and there was some kid running behind me, you know, like running home from school. And I was like, yeah. what, what is that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but there's, that's just your brain sort of helping you kind of work through it, right? So, um, so look, again, I prefer to think about, I count my lucky stars yeah. and I didn't have my kids with me. I didn't tumble into traffic. Um, I think the you know police are gonna hopefully resolve it. We'll see. I don't know, but right. the but you know my issue is more. I started calling for police in the subway system in 2019. I remember yeah. that, and this and, was before COVID and the shutdown. Yeah, because again, if you're in the system, if you're in the if you're in the city, if you're out and about. Um, you know, you're seeing things, you're feeling things, and I think, you know, the job of elected officials is to be responsive to that. So, I'm so let me ask it. you, what did you feel in 2019? Because all of a sudden it seems like <coughs> the mentally challenged people that are out there are gonna go off at any moment. Like, where were these people, and why are there so many of them on the street right now? So I don't know what it was. I don't know, I don't know the triggers for any of this. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a law enforcement expert. Um, although the pandemic clearly is involved. But in 2019, there was just a turn from 2016, 17, 18. 
I, you know, I wandered the subway system and wandered the city at seven, eight, nine months pregnant without a care in the world, mm. you know, never thinking um, that, that we had an issue in the subway system. And in 19, it started to turn. And um, I just perceived it. And I had, I had just started on the MTA board and, and there was no difference there. I had always ridden the subway before. Yeah. I was always riding the subway then. But it was, <laughs> it was an issue in 2017. I mean, I'm sorry, 2019. 2019. Clearly, we called for additional police. The MTA went in to hire 500 police officers. Our view of that was, you know, there are legitimate concerns with NYPD and how they police. Let's acknowledge that. Let's control our own police force. Let's grow that police force. I'd rather that police force report to the MTA on training on all of those. Let me things. ask you something, because during your time, I believe they decriminalized turnstile jumping. Mm. Was that, you know? Van said he would stop prosecuting it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look, I and mean, the mayor was for it. Mayor de Blasio was for it. He was <laughs> like, OK, that's fine with me. Yeah. Look, the frustrating thing there is, look, I don't think anybody should go to jail or be ticketed uh, $150 or, or, you know, end up in a, in a precarious financial position because they jumped a turnstile. My philosophy was, you jump a turnstile, I want someone to catch you and to say, try again, my friend, not today. You know, you're going to walk to your destination or you're going to pay. Um, you know, but what we run into is um, we have issues in the system. We go back, you look at the video, you see the person entering the system, they didn't pay. And then, uh, and so you realize that while certainly not everyone who beats the fare is criminal, a lot of the folks who are causing issues in the system have been beating the fare. Beating a fare <coughs> is a criminal act because you're not paying for it, uh, which we have to acknowledge. But then you're looking at people like that video that we saw of um, the NYPD officer who tried to stop that 16 year old from, from jumping the fare, got brutally beaten, choked out. The girlfriend started getting in and punching. And we're like, well, I don't even know what you would do as an NYPD officer to try to stop that. Moving forward, there has to be a different kind of mentality change for police officers not to be scared to do that. Look, all of these issues are, are they're not easy solutions or mm. we would have fixed them a long time ago, right? Yeah. The MTA would have fixed them, the governor, the mayor, whatever would have right. fixed them. I think these are, these are sweeping issues that, that require lots of um, policy decisions, um, commitment and dedication and focus. So I think the larger problem is, you know, if we are going to focus on fair beating, let's talk about the fact that we've got a significant poverty problem in this city. Mm -hmm. Let's be able to take the poverty issue off the table. Let's expand the fair fares program. Yeah. Our fair fares program is way too small, way too small, mm -hmm. way too strict on income. You basically have to be making almost no money in order yeah. to qualify for the fair fare program. That's crazy. Let's like raise that limit so that we can get more people in that program. They pay a half of a fare. Doesn't cost the MTA anything because the city funds it. Yeah. And like frankly, the state should step up too. You know, you can if you can take poverty off the off the table, and then you're dealing with you know a different issue, and then we can address that. Right. But these are hard. These are hard intractable yeah. problems. What do you do in these days? Um, I, uh, I have a consulting business, which I started um, years ago, back in 2017. So I continue to do that. What do you um, consult with? Uh, I usually help tech companies. That's, okay, that's just, the mo that's most of because I yeah. I need some consulting. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> I am available for you. Some I personal charge, life consulting. Nothing. I have some issues that I have to deal with. Family stuff. I'm do available. You do that? I'm a, yes, I'm okay. available. <laughs> I'm oh. totally available. And uh, and I spend a lot of time with with um, with my daughter and my stepdaughter, mm. which is great. Oh, that's Started great. a Daisy troop. Oh. Do there any East Village girls who want to be a Daisy? Oh. Love that. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to catch up with you. It's I'm so glad you're you. okay. I'm fine. Yes. Thank you. No, no bruising or anything. S same on face. Yeah. Thank goodness. It's a good face. All right. It's a great face. Thank you. Thank Stay you. So safe. nice to see I'm you. Happy to Thank see you. Here.